Rub up your engines! Karaoke 1, 2, 3 asks, what do you think about newer Honda Odysseys, 2006 and up? Honda Odysseys have always had problems with their automatic transmissions, period. They just do. And even the 2007s, 8s, I had customers where they went bad on them. They just have never built good automatic transmissions. And I had some customers with the Odysseys that have the V6 engines, the cams were wearing out in the engines, and they had to replace the cams, rebuild the engines, which is a very expensive proposition. Honda did replace a lot of automatic transmissions free when people found out and called them up, but really, I'm still not a fan of them. The Toyota Sienna vans last so much longer and have so little problems that it would be foolhardy to buy an Odyssey van versus a Sienna van if you want something that's reliable. Erased Identity, that's a good one. So Scotty, I've got an 04 Pontiac GTO for 10 years, starting to show massive age, needs a ton of parts. Ditch it or rebuild this non-classic GTO, thanks. Well, I mean, if you're nuts about it, you'll want to rebuild it, but uh, it's never going to be a classic. You even said non-classic, so it's never going to be worth all that much money. If you're going to spend thousands and thousands, I wouldn't advise doing it since it's not a classic. Those things are never going to be classics. They made too many of them, and they had too many problems with them as they age, so I'd probably say Nick's on that one. Peter Rodriguez, and Peter says, hey, Scotty, I'm looking to buy an 87 Chevy 350, but what car or truck to buy that's best to own? I'm not a GM fan, but back then, they made pretty solid vehicles. You want a 350? I'd say you want a truck, just get their 350 full-size pickup truck. I got a customer that still owns one of those things with a V8, and it will still burn rubber. And even though it's an automatic transmission, it still works, and they didn't even have to rebuild it yet. They made them pretty solid back then. The main thing, though, is depending on where you live, you want to check for rust damage, usually in a frame. If you live, like, in Michigan or New York or someplace where they throw salt on the road in the winter, you want to check the frame, because if the frame's rotten, you don't want to buy it. It's not worth buying. But as long as the frame's solid, those big old 350 V8 engines can go forever. Abdullah Swiden, and he says, Scotty, my car has a weird sound. It looks like it's coming from the pulleys. Drive it about 20 minutes, it goes away. What's the problem? Well, your fan belt's driving an awful lot of stuff. So, you say it makes the noise when you start, and then quiets down when it gets hotter. That's kind of a classic sign of either the water pump or the alternator. So what you want to do is take the fan belts off when it's cold, and then start spinning all the pulleys one at a time. And when one of them starts going and the others are quiet, you know that the bearings are wearing out on that particular pulley system. It's an easy way to do it. That's how I do it as a mechanic when I'm checking stuff out. So just take the fan belts off when it's cold, spin them all, and you'll probably find one's making a noise, and you know that's the worn out one. Gavin Michael says, what's the best new battery for a 2015 S60 T5 Volvo? Okay. You get one of those absorb glass mat batteries, the AGM batteries. They hold more power. They tend to last longer if you take care of the vehicle. They do cost an awful lot more, but Volvos have very high-tech electronics, and you want to have a battery that has an awful lot of power in reserve so that if something goes wrong, all the electronics will still work correctly, and one that can take lots of start and stopping, especially if you live in a cold area. A lot of people have Volvos up north where it's cold, and that battery's going to hold up a lot more. You pay a lot more money for them, yes, but they do last longer, and they put out more power as long as you maintain them like anything else. You keep corrosion off of them, spray them with the anti-corrosion spray so they don't get any buildup, and that's probably the best one for that Volvo. Mark Williams and Mark says, my driver's side power seat switch stopped working. It's stuck in a position that's uncomfortable for me. Nobody carries the switch. A dealership wants 200 bucks for a switch. I want to keep it. What are the options? Thanks. Okay, well, if you really want to be cheap, it's a switch. Take the switch out. Find out which are power, which are ground, and which ones you give power and ground to to move it back and forth, and just do that until you get in a position that you want it in, and leave it there. That makes the absolute most sense, and if you can't figure that out, a lot of them, you can take the motor off, take the seat out of the car, take the motor off, and then put it in a position that you want, and just lock it in place there, by either putting the motor back in, or if you have it in a position that you want, you could just put a couple of bolts and nuts on the frame itself in that position and bolt it down there. I've done that for people when they didn't want to spend a fortune fixing one of those chairs that got stuck in a bad position. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.